All right, so just to belabor the point, this was the part of my body that was stuck, so all of these movements are really helping getting some length and some openness, yeah. and it's the movement that's been doing it as much as the, the static work. Okay. <coughs> All right, let's now start to focus on the sideline through the body. Sideline means potentially anywhere from navel to lower back and all the way up the length of the spine, the whole side of the body. So just stand there with your feet about hip width apart, knees a little bit bent, tuck the tail, lift the chest, and just some simple side curls. Again, for those of you that were here yesterday, we did some really basic stuff. We're going to make it much stronger today. So my focus here is not on curling over with the waist muscles, it's on reaching the arm down the legs, just so you don't get any cramping through the side. If this is a very tight movement in your body, and it is for many people, you can do it really slowly, especially if you're not used to doing unsupported side bending movements. If it's too intense in the lower back, in a kind of compression sense, then tuck the tail more, flatten the lumbar curve before you do this reasonably strict side bending. Good. Okay, and pause. Take one arm up next to the ear, actually lock it against the ear, and then do five or six or seven in one direction with that much longer lever. Again, don't go crazy, especially if you're not used to unsupported side bends. You could sequence your breathing so you breathe out each time you go to the side, breathe in as you come up again. And just feel, can you go as far now that you've got this other arm all the way up there, or is it just a much stronger sensation, you can't get as much movement? Of course, now it's not just the waist and obliques, it's full length of the lats is under stretch there. Change arms. Try again. <coughs> You can always have the feet stepped a little bit wider if that makes you feel more stable. And it's up to you whether you have the knees a bit bent or not <coughs> straight. <coughs> Are you aware of any left-right difference in these basic side bending movements? Remembering that differences can be as gross as one side is more restricted than the other, or it might be that something is being stretched most strongly on one side and it's different on the other side. Good. Okay, step the feet a little bit wider and now we just turn it into a nice flowing, bowing movement. You're trying to make a full bow through the body. Your trailing leads heel is coming up. Some people find this one a bit of a coordination challenge, so I'll just give you a little left-right cue. If you're stepping on your left foot, it's the left arm that comes up, and vice versa. So, left arm. so step on, just step on one foot, just choose a side, and then the same side's arm goes up. That's it. Okay, so you can variously do this with the chest really lifted, so you're very upright, or you can bend forward a little bit, and you might find the hips are actually pushing back as well as going to the sides. As long as your lower back is happy with it, there's no reason you can't lean back a little bit, add some slight rotation. Again, one movement to which we're adding all sorts of different movements. a few more and really now focus on the pushing of the hips to the side. Really push through. And the leg that you're standing on, press the knee very straight. Strictly keep it straight and see whether you get strong pulls through the outside of the leg as much as through the waist and the side of the torso. Okay, and then just pause and wriggle around. All right. So here comes our first <coughs> long held static sequence. You're going to be head down, so you just have to follow by my <coughs> precise verbal cueing. That's what I'm aiming for. Anyway, 
So, bend the knees a little bit, tuck the tail, chin on chest, and have your palms just resting on the top of the thighs there, and then just gradually walk the fingertips down towards your kneecaps, but you're curving in the middle back, not bending over at the hips at all, just slumped there, it's a slump. Breathe deeply. The arms are dead weights just hanging out of the shoulder joints, the head and neck completely relaxed. And then you're going to alternate, reaching one set of fingers down to the kneecap, so you're adding a slight lateral movement, and then the other way. So just adding little lateral movements to that basic slump. Hold on a tail tuck. Many of you got the knees straight, bend them a little bit. Imagine the arms are getting heavier and heavier, allowing all the muscles on the back of the body to be stretched, largely by the weight of the arms, and you're adding that little movement. Karen, just step your feet a bit wider. At least hip width apart. Okay, now pause in the centre and move your hands so they're spanning the right thigh. They're not in the middle anymore, they're on one side. And just do three or four curls over to the right there, just reaching the right hand down, but you've gone a bit to the right, so it's slightly different sensations through the waist, hip, all of that complex. You're warming up a little bit now, so you might find the range of movement that you can use is greater. And then pause, shift over so your hands are spanning the left thigh, and do some curls to the left there, reaching down with the left hand mainly. The main point of curve here wants to be in your middle back, in your thoracic spine. Some of you are starting to bend over at the hips now, so come a bit more upright. Think slump in the middle back. Hold on a tail tuck so that it'll stop you bending over at the hips. Good. All right, let's go back to the right side. You just explored your range of movement, so just reach the right hand down and just hold that position. Almost like you're a stroke victim. The whole right side of your body has just collapsed there, you're just hanging there. Tuck the tail a little bit more. Breathe deeply, and every time you breathe out, let the body sag a bit more. Whatever tension you're maintaining in the shoulders, let it go, sag. Is your head and neck as relaxed as it could be? Get used to holding a position unsupported. It's not a big range of movement, but we're going to be here for several minutes. Now start to do some shifting of your hips left and right. Think of it as just gentle shifts of weight from foot to foot. Maintaining the same body position and just little shifts of the hips left and right. Do you feel things being moved or pulled on? In the left hip, full focus on the left side here. Are you breathing comfortably? And work out how far you can comfortably drift the hips to the left and just pause there. A few deep breaths and again when you breathe out, really sag a bit more. Let the right arm sag further down. Use the breath to help you go further and further. Now do some tiny pelvic tilting movements. By that I mean you're tucking there and then you're untucking. Still got the whole pelvis pushed out to the left a little bit, still sagging, and you're adding some little pelvic tilts. Can you relax through the left side of the body in this unsupported standing side bend? You might find you've got a lot of range of movement in the pelvic tilt, or practically nothing. Just feel what you can do there. Okay, let's pause in the tail tucked position. Another couple of deep breaths, and again, sag more. Let the right side sag a little bit further. So it's a bit of a flexion, it's a bit of a lateral flexion. Relax the head and neck. Arms are completely hanging out of the body. And then start some rotations in the pelvis, all led by the left hip. Draw it back a little bit, 
and then let it move forward a little bit, maintaining that tail tuck. And see whether adding rotations of the pelvis changes the effect in a sense of moving from the lower back through the waist around into the lower abdomen. Are you still breathing comfortably there? Okay, and then just pause with the hips in the middle position, pointing to the front. Now untuck the pelvis a little bit, so you're deliberately putting a bit of arch in the back, and repeat the pelvic rotation movement. See if it feels different when your pelvis is untucked. Really emphasize the drawing of the left hip back. You can add a little knee straightening action to that movement. You might find as you draw the left hip back, you can get the left knee completely straight, potentially starting to pull into a quadratus lumborum. Let's do a couple more of those. And then just pause with the hips centered, pelvis not tucked or untucked, a few deep breaths and try and sag a little bit more to the right. Take your left hand and put it behind the left hip joint. This is a tactile cue now to breathe as deeply as you can into that hand. Breathe. Make that left hand move by your breath. And each time you breathe out, sag a little bit more to the right. Now move the left hand a little bit higher up the left side of the back there and breathe into there. Breathe as deeply as you can, not just shallow breaths, really breathe deeply. Make the hand move. Check that your head and neck still relax. Okay, bring the left hand down just wherever it's comfortable. Let's actually just place it on the left hip joint. And now you're going to roll the left hip, the left shoulder, I should say. So now we're coming into more of a strict lateral flexion, a side bend, but it's still unsupported. The right hand is just hanging down there. Find a head and neck position that's comfortable. If you want to bring it so your nose is facing to the front, you can do it that way. I tend to just keep looking at the floor. Here, again, the left-right movements of your hips. Try and emphasize the pushing of the hips out to the left. Slightly stricter side bend now. You can variously play with having the left knee straight through, through the bend. Try some different knee angles. You're in a fairly strong stretch position now, so these movements are probably quite small scale, but nonetheless, there's movement here. Good. Okay, try and pause with the left hip pressed out to the side as much as you can, and roll the left shoulder back even more, in much stricter side bend now. Are you able to breathe deeply into the left side? Okay, now push the right hip forward a little bit. So a little bit of rotation. Now we're trying to get the pull, line of pull through around to the lower abdomen on that left side. Put your left hand on that part of the lower abdomen, left side of the lower abdomen, and breathe as deeply as you can into that hand. Breathe, make the hand move as you breathe deep into the belly there. And your breathing will be forward, physically forward towards your front and up. Try and pull that part of the belly up a little bit. I can feel the deep hip flexors in there now because of where I am. Breathe deeply. Good. Can you relax and sag a little bit more to the right as you breathe out? Now, if you're running out of strength, you could support yourself on the right hand, but it's more effective if you don't. You're holding yourself here. Two or three more breaths. And 
and then come out like you would any side bend, just roll the top shoulder through the front, nice and slow, take a breath in, and up. Oh. And wriggle around, move again. All sorts of little movements, circles. You might find a whole lot of residual tension here now. It's like, oh, what can I do for the last, I don't know how many minutes, several minutes. I always say two or three, but it's generally more like ten or something. It's the time help that's working in my body, not just the positions. If you feel you need to, because we, we can do the whole thing on the other side, you could do a little standing round out if that will help you ease up through the lower back a little bit. And then just going for a little wander around. Give you a little break before we do the second side. shift, pause your hips out to the right as far as you're comfortable with, and then add some rotations of the hips. Your mental attention is the movement of the right hip, not the left one. Of course, the left one's moving, but you're focusing on the right one. As you draw the right hip back, make an effort to straighten the right knee and then let it bend as it goes forward. 
Keep breathing as deeply as you can into that right side of the body. Okay, pause with the hips not rotated. And practice some gentle pelvic tilting there. More tail tuck through to as much untuck. For me on the right side, the untuck is getting into all sorts of interesting lines through hips, waist, a bit into the obliques there. Okay, pause with the pelvis with a strong tail tuck. Take a few deep breaths in and out and try and sag a little bit more to the left and more lateral flexion. And with the tail strongly tucked, go back to rotations. Moving the right hip forwards and backwards. Check that both arms are completely limp. No effort maintained across upper back. And then pause in the center. Tilt the pelvis to a slight or big untuck. And then try the rotations in that position. At this point you should have a bit more weight on the right foot than the left one. As we move the hips out to the right. Okay, pause, hips not rotated. Now that tucked or untucked in the pelvis. Go back to the right left side shifts. Try and emphasize the movement of the hips to the right. Each time you do it, you might find you even partially unweight the left foot. Breathe deeply. Okay, and then just pause with the hips as far to the right as you're comfortable with. Take the right hand and put it on the back of the hip there, right down low where your waistband is. And try three or four deep breaths. Really make that hand move via the breath. And as you breathe out, let the left side sag a little bit more. On this side, I'm getting as much of a stretch through the side of the right leg as I am in the waist and the lower back. You might find that too. Now move that right hand a little bit higher up, maybe a little bit further around towards the lumbar spine, and direct your breathing strongly, fully into there. Feel the capacity of the breath to move that part of the back out to the side and out behind you and even up to the ceiling. Three different directions of movement. If you're starting to get fatigued, if you need to, you could support with the left hand on the leg. But if you can tolerate it, keep going unsupported. Good. Okay, bring the right hand just on the hip or just rest it somewhere comfortably. And now you're going to roll the right shoulder back a little bit. You might find the left one moves forward a little bit. Choose a head and neck position that you can relax completely. So now we're in a much stronger side bend. Do some micro left right shifts of your pelvis. Again, if you need to support on the bottom arm, you can do that. Now you're going to roll the right shoulder back even more. It might even be just behind the bottom one. And then take the right hand and put it on the right side of the lower abdomen. And now you're breathing deeply into there. Push the lower abdomen forward into your hand with the breath. And also think about pulling those tissues up as you breathe in. You can even use the right hand to pull them up a little bit if you want to. 
Really pulling into some deep abdominal muscles there. Two more breaths there, almost done on this side. Okay, and then just let the right hand relax. A couple more breaths, just focus on sagging even a little bit more to the left. And you could add any little movements you want. I'm doing tiny little circle movements on my pelvis. I'm adding those micro movements to this full stretch position that you've been holding for quite a while now. Okay, to come out, roll the top shoulder to the front, nice and slow. Take a breath in, press up with the arms. And recombobulate. And then just try and move around a little bit. All sorts of tension being held in certain spots in order to hold the position. So now try and ease all that out, move around. If you feel like you need to do another little standing round that you can do that, or just a standing forward bend. Whatever you need to do. some really basic hip circles. This will help ease out the two fairly static things you just did. So just circling the hips. You might feel like you've only got a little bit of movement available now. Everything's kind of recombobulating, coming back in. So just move around. You can add tucking and untucking to the circles. Or don't be concerned about the pelvic tilt, just circle. You can have the knees straight, knees bent. Do small circles through to full, as big circles as you can. You can have the torso upright or you can let the torso move forward and backwards with the circles. Good. I mentioned this yesterday when we did a little bit of hip work. I'm finding it's good not to use the tactile cues of the hands on the hips. Can you really get the movement and the feeling without the feeling of the hands being moved? So, how did you find that little standing sequence? Pretty intense? Intense. Yes. You did really well. I spent about a year building up to that length of time, but that's got to get you money. <laughs> 